on this episode of China Uncensored. Learn how to be politically correct from the OG. China. Welcome back to China Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. You've probably heard of the term politically correct. It became popular starting in the 1970s, like bell bottoms and mullets. Political correctness originally meant saying things that conformed to a specific political ideology. But fashion trends evolve, and nowadays in the West, most people think of political correctness as changing the way you say things to avoid offending people. Like instead of saying handicapped, saying differently abled. Or instead of calling someone a numbskull, calling them a person who lacks nerve endings on his head. But you may not know that political correctness in its original form has actually been part of Chinese territory since ancient times, by which I mean the 1950s. And when the political ideology you have to be correct about is communism, it can be deadly. Since the early days of Chairman Mao, using the wrong words could get you punished or even killed. For example, in the 1960s during China's Cultural Revolution, scientists couldn't do research on sunspots or even say sunspots. Mao Zedong was China's red sun, so if your research suggested that the sun has spots of darkness, you were also implying that Mao did too. Extreme political correctness in China is still important today. Even something like calling the Diaoyu Islands by their Japanese name, the Senkaku Islands, is enough to get you branded as being anti-China. Because how dare you use a Japanese word to describe some uninhabited islands that are definitely 100% part of China. And these politically correct protests prove there's no controversy whatsoever. So when it comes to territorial disputes, I'm going to back off here and say political correctness historically belongs to the Chinese Communist Party. And lately, Chinese leader Xi Jinping has been talking a lot about it. In recent months, political correctness has been appearing repeatedly in President Xi Jinping's speeches and party documents. And what happens to those foolish foreigners who are politically incorrect? Well, this past week has seen a string of Western companies accidentally stepping over the party line. The first victim was the Marriott International Hotel chain. They sent out this survey to members of their customer loyalty program. It asks, which country are you currently living in? And proceeds to list not countries like Hong Kong and Taiwan and Tibet. Marriott may have thought it was just collecting data, but it was actually angering the beast. This was China's official reaction. Shanghai police opened up an investigation into the company for violating cybersecurity and advertising laws and questioned Marriott executives. Angry Chinese called for a boycott of the hotel chain. And even worse, Marriott's official Twitter account liked a tweet from a group called Friends of Tibet. Don't worry, that guy got fired. After a huge amount of backlash, Marriott's Chinese website and mobile phone app were temporarily shut down by the authorities. Now, Marriott has been desperately trying to apologize. They've issued a series of apologies and a bizarre clarification that it does not support separatism. No, I totally get it. Like if I had a survey and asked you which country you're from and I listed Texas as an answer, you might be wondering if I was making some kind of statement. Anyway, Marriott got nervous because it sees China as its biggest market, not just for hotels in China, but also as a destination for the growing number of Chinese tourists abroad. Marriott is far from alone in making politically incorrect statements about Taiwan. In fact, in the same week, Chinese regulators rebuked fashion brand Zara, Delta Airlines, and medical device maker Medtronic for calling Taiwan a country on their websites. They have also profusely apologized. The problem is, this is a very easy mistake to make. All it takes is a drop-down menu that says country to put a Western company in politically hot water. Like when you go to the British Airways website, it has a pop-up asking you to select your country. And you can choose Taiwan, or Macau, or Hong Kong. Confusing? Don't worry, British Airways fixed it last week. Now it just says from. 
So far, 24 airlines have gotten into trouble for their drop-down menus. Clearly, a serious crime. But it's more than just hotels and airlines that have to worry. Some celebrities have been banned from entering China for not being politically correct. Like that time, Katy Perry held a concert in Taiwan where she wore the Taiwan flag on top of a sunflower dress. Little did she know, Chinese provinces don't have flags. Her little mistake got her banned from China. Which shows you just how ridiculous this whole thing is. If any country is going to ban Katy Perry, it should be Egypt. Also Japan. And frankly, any country that has a beach. Katy Perry did try to dance her way out of the China ban by apologizing profusely. She sent this letter to authorities promising not to do or say anything religious or political or participate in any activities that jeopardize China's unity and integrity. The CCP still denied her entry. Even American universities have been attacked for not being politically correct, like how UC San Diego wanted to host the Dalai Lama. And the CCP responded by withdrawing state funding for Chinese students wanting to go there. And Maroon 5 may have had their concert in China canceled because of a tweet wishing the Dalai Lama a happy birthday. And this video from Hong Kong's Apple Daily says that recently, customs officials in mainland China have been destroying food imports labeled as coming from Taiwan, China. That term used to be politically correct, but now it's not politically correct enough. Customs officials want them to say Taiwan District, China. But some companies are politically smart. They try to project to the Chinese regime just how politically correct they can be. Like Apple. In December, as Chinese internet censorship was reaching terrifying new heights, Apple CEO Tim Cook made a trip to China and praised their open internet. Yeah, he really said that. Don't believe me? Google it. Just don't try to Google it from inside China. So what do you think about political correctness in China? Leave your comments below or on our website. Thanks for watching this episode of China Uncensored. Once again, I'm your host, Chris Chappell. See you next time. Hey, you know what's always politically correct? Contributing to China Uncensored on Patreon. YouTube has been demonetizing our videos on controversial topics like communism or North Korea or political correctness. So to keep the show going, we rely on viewer support. Click this orange button to learn how you can support us and get some cool rewards for your efforts.